Hey guys, welcome back. So today I want to do a, a video that's kind of a follow-up video on a gun I've talked about a lot in the past. Well, maybe not a lot, but a little bit. And it's this gun. Especially my followers on Instagram, every time I post pictures of this gun, they say, uh, hey Mac, when are you going to do an update video? Tell us more about it. What do you think of the TP9? So we're going to talk about the TP9 today, but we're going to talk about a couple of new things regarding the TP9 that we haven't talked about in previous videos. So the TP9, if you're not familiar with it, uh, is basically an all polymer rotating locking mechanism, submachine gun redesigned as a legal semi-automatic that's imported by BNT USA. Uh, so this is a Swiss made firearm. Now this started life as a handgun. I registered it as an SBR and installed its side folding stock. It comes with this 1913 pick rail attached. I just put a little black magpole grip on the front of it and you do that because you can see right here that barrel's pretty darn close to your hand. You don't want to stick a thumb or something out there and get it blasted off so it's good to do this. Now keep in mind guys if you buy one of these TP9s as a pistol and it's not an SBR and you put this vertical grip on it that's illegal. That isn't an NFA item as stupid as that is and as hard as we have to work to get rid of that stupid law until you SBR one of these you cannot legally put a forward grip on it or unless you want to register it as any other weapon, which doesn't allow you to put a stock on it, just allows you to put a pistol grip. Long story, NFA's confusing. That's boring. Let's just talk about this little gun. So this little gun has a T2 micro on it, and of course is the SBR. I'm just gonna fire off some supersonic rounds here out of it, and we're just gonna aim at the, uh, we got a big old challenge steel target down there. We're gonna put some rounds on here. And then we'll show you something a little bit different. Alright, she locked open just like an AR-15. She talks to you, you can feel that bolt locked to the rear, and it does have an AMBI magazine release. Drop that out. And now, let's make this thing a little bit more quiet. It's just no fun shooting that thing having to wear hearing protection. Bolts locked to the rear. I do have the safety engaged. You can see the weapon is empty. This is the TP9 suppressor, guys. One of our distributors finally got one of these in stock and Copper Custom picked it up to test it out because we do sell the TP9 pistols. And so we decided to put this on here. Now you'll notice that it has its own proprietary uh, three lug system. Is it, yeah, it's a three lug, yeah it is, it's three lugs. And it's got this really big mechanism here. And this suppressor is designed specifically for this gun. So you line it up with the three lugs, you twist it, and then you just ratchet down the silencer, it gives you another little pick rail down here if you want to use it, but that is the dedicated, you can see the markings on the can, that is the dedicated TP9 suppressor. Now there's something else I'll show you in a later video that you can do with this so you can attach this suppressor to other three lug firearms, standard HK style three lug firearms. We'll talk about that in a later video. But now, somewhere in my pocket, I do believe I have some subsonic loads. These are Freedom Munitions 140 grain, I'm sorry, 147 grain ball rounds. This is not their hush stuff. This is just their standard range 147 grain ball rounds. And now, let's just go ahead and see how quiet this is. Okay, I know what you guys say. Stop shooting steel, let's see how quiet it is. All right, we'll just aim at the dirt. <laughs> guys? This is awesome! This is my favorite 9mm SBR, bar none now. This suppressor and this package, it's so light, compact, handy. I am so in love with this gun. All the guys at the shop agree. This is one of the coolest SBR projects you could ever do. 
and I'm just madly in love with this little gun now that I have the proper suppressor for it because it does have that proprietary mount. Now, let's talk a little bit about the history of the TP9 because BNT didn't invent this handgun, SBR, rifle, submachine gun, whatever you want to call it. That was done by an Austrian company. Let's take a look at its, its parent, its father, let's say. It's brother, father, sister, I don't know, a close relative to the BNT TP9. So the BNT TP9 obviously didn't originate as a Swiss design. As I've already mentioned, it was an Austrian design. Steyr Manager designed the pistol back in the late 80s, perhaps early 90s. I actually had one of the pistols in the early 90s. And I've always loved weird little nine millimeter carbines, even though it was sold as a handgun, again, because of our stupid NFA laws. So what I have here in front of me is an original Steyr Manager produced, Austrian made, SPP pistol. This one is brand new in the box. It's never been fired. It's just been sitting around all these years and today is its day. All right, guys, I'll take her out of the box here. It's been in and out of the box quite a bit and it's been handled, but never fired. So I'm gonna go ahead. We'll just make sure that this weapon's clear. Same thing, T-handle type charging on the front. You can see in the chamber there, nice and clear. It has a cross block safety. So there's a little white spec there. White means safe. You click it to the other side. Red means danger. All right, so we have it on safe. Same thing with the TP9. I'm just going to leave the bolt locked to the rear. We were shooting it a little while ago. And um, same thing, safety is on. So it has a cross block safety. So here's the original. And here is the new and improved BNT design. Now, Steyr is known for building quality firearms, and so is BNT. I am a huge fan of BNT firearms. I have a number of them, and I love the fact that the owner, Carl, shares my affinity for 80s weapons. So, this original design was, the, I believe, the rights were transferred to BNT, and they modified it, improved upon it in a number of different ways, and sell it now as a TP9. So, let's take a look at some of the obvious differences, and some of those are. First of all, we don't have a 1913 rail across the top here. We just have this. There is a mounting system. I believe it's proprietary, maybe at one time. I know my original pistol, I didn't have anything mounted to it, I don't believe. I just had the, the open sights. But it has open sights in the rear and a pin here in the front. Aside from the basic design of the rear aperture, those same sights are present on the TP9 as well, with the exception that the rear sight on the TP9 is an actual peep aperture versus a blade and notch system. So you can see the differences there. Up front, you have just a big broad pin post. This rear sight on both the guns with a screw you can adjust for windage. So it lacks that Picatinny rail across the top there. You'll notice the texturing on the grip really hasn't changed. However, you'll notice right here there isn't a button to release the magazine. On the TP9, we have an ambi release on the magazine. The method of disassembly is different. You'll notice here we do not have the ability to mount a Picatinny rail, which we do on the TP9. And on the rear of the SPP, which stands for Special Purpose Pistol, we don't have anything other than the ability to put a strap sling on the rear as a single point device, whereas the BNT improved version, all pistols come with the ability to accept a folding stock once you file your Form 1, pay your $200 unconstitutional tax, and get your paperwork back. So those are the two pistols. Those are the obvious differences externally. The cross-block safety is the same. The method of disassembly is the same. And now we're going to take this brand new pistol apart and show you what it looks like on the inside, because really, it's identical to the TP9, except for this shroud here, right? So. On the, the TP9, we, we have a shroud, but it's also a tri-lug adapter for a suppressor. This is just an added piece of aluminum to the locking block because you have a hand stop here. It's to keep you from shooting your thumb off because if you grab it like this and shoot it, if this extended aluminum piece wasn't there, there's a very high likelihood you'd shoot your thumb off. All right, so we've already made sure the weapon's clear, but I'm gonna go ahead and check one more time. To take it apart, you have a button here in the rear. And this is just like the TP9. So we're gonna push it on this button and then we have a Glock style pull down release here in the front. You kind of have to wiggle the top half off the bottom half. So I'm gonna go ahead and release the 
top half by pushing the button and wiggling it around. You'll see it break loose there just a little bit. I'm gonna come up here now and, and pinch and pull down on these, this Glock-like assembly and pull up. Ugh. It, it wants to fight with you. There we go. <laughs> Got it apart. <laughs> Take the recoil spring out there and then you can just lift the, uh, the mechanism out. All right. So, all right, so there's your recoil spring. There's your top half. Here's your bottom half, brand new, unfired, no carbon whatsoever. And all this is literally identical. Dimensionally, everything, parts are swappable with the BNT gun. You can see that rotating locking mechanism. And the dwell time, I'm gonna say, is a little bit longer with this locking mechanism because the TP9 is such a quiet firearm when it's suppressed. The can on that thing with subsonic loads makes the gun ridiculously quiet, very, very quiet. And so I believe this, this locking mechanism plays some part in that. So it's a unique design for sure. And this, again, is completely identical to what is now known as the TP9. I'm gonna put all this back together here really quick. Didn't mean to take the recoil spring and guide rod out there. That was completely unintentional. <clears throat> Usually just, just leave that in there. All right, just pops back into place. You take your bolt and carrier assembly, if you will. Put the spring in the rear of the bolt. Just slide everything back until it sets down and it's kind of locks into place. You'll see this little tab here in the front and there you have your upper assembly reassembled. The lower, like I said, brand new, no carbon whatsoever. You have a, a hammer firing mechanism back here. Again, this is pretty much straight up TP9 stuff. A lot of the things that had been done to improve the TP9 from the SPP uh, are, aren't internally that different. Externally, we have AMBI controls added. We have you know things to attach stocks and we have improved 1913 pick rails across the top. But internally, it's pretty much the same darn gun. All right, put it back together. Just line everything up here in the front. Push it down until everything kind of clicks into place. All right. And the gun is back together. So here's another interesting point. This is the original 15 round magazine that shipped with the SPP. This is a BNT magazine currently produced that's used by the TP9, that's used by several other, the KH9, the P26, um, all those other nine millimeter sub guns that BNT produces, they continue to use the same magazine that originated here with the Austrian SPP. This is a BNT magazine, fits into the gun, locks open and works fine. And conversely, I can use an original SPP magazine and put it into the TP9 as well. So that means magazines are still available for these. Now these can be found on Gun Broker. Um, I'm gonna guess they're probably going at auction anywhere between 800 to maybe 1200 bucks, something like that. Um, and there's one other thing I do wanna point out before we start shooting these things. Externally, we talked about the safeties and things like that. Uh, the charging handle is different, the sights are different, but also if you notice the trigger on this bad boy, just a rather conventional looking trigger. Another thing that BNT changed, improved, was the addition of a drop safety trigger, very similar to the Glock. This prevents the trigger's own weight. You remember when the P320 flap happened where the guns were being dropped and going off? Um, this dingus in the trigger is an inertial safety that keeps the gun from being fired should it be dropped. Okay, so that is another improvement that, uh, that BNT added to the original design of the gun. All right, guys. Let's go shoot this brand new, never fired before SPP pistol. All right, guys, here we go. Maiden Voyage, the SPP, brand new pistol, never fired before, and uh, with its original 15 round magazine. I think I called these 115 grain ball rounds when in reality we're shooting 124 grain American Eagle ammunition out of it. So this is its original magazine. I'm gonna place it into the pistol grip until it locks into place, just like the BNT TP9, the original SPP has a bolt release right here. It's much like a slide stop release that you would find on a normal handgun. Just reach up and hit that with your thumb and the bolt goes home and chambers around. 
We have the safety here. It's on safe now. To make it ready to fire, all I have to do is push this across, and now it's ready to fire. Now, what's funny about these handguns, guys, I pointed this out in my original TP9 video. An empty TP9 or SPP video, uh, pistol, I'm sorry, weighs about as much as a fully loaded 1911 with an eight, an eight round magazine using 230 grain ball. So no ammunition in this gun. This gun weighs as much as a 1911 with eight rounds of ammunition in it, 230 grain ball. Isn't that weird? It's a very light little handy gun, despite the fact it's kind of big and awkward looking. So anyway, we've got a round chambered, safety's off. And I wonder if these sights are even on. First shots, guys. This gun has never been fired before. I think it's a little low. All right, so it's definitely hitting left. So I had to kind of figure out, so I would have to adjust that rear side a little bit. So the first 15 rounds ever out of this gun, it functions just fine. So take the original magazine out. Now I have a B&T magazine, new production for the current TP9 pistol. And again, some federal 124 grain ball rounds loaded up. See how she does using the new manufactured magazine. We are back at the 50 yard line. The sight picture on this thing is very broad. It is not a precision sight at all. And then, come on, follow me. We gotta answer one question, right guys? Does this thing 80s hip fire? Well, let's find out. <laughs> Got a little bit of walking to do, but we can make it over here. And I think I'm gonna use the, uh, the man size challenge target there on the right that's freshly painted. It's going to have to get pretty close because the 80s hip fire style, despite what Hollywood would teach us, is not exactly the most accurate way to fire a pistol or any weapon for that matter. All right, BNT magazine have 25 rounds loaded into a 30 round magazine. It's my OCD kicking in. It's exactly half of a 50 round box. Okay, release the bolt, safety's off. Now I'm going to hold it just like this, have a finger stop here and my thumb is protected, but I'm gonna keep it away from that muzzle anyway. And let's see if this thing 80s hip fires. <laughs> and the answer to that question is, yes it does. Unfortunately, it does not take Glock mags. <laughs> this gun's fun. You know, I bought this pistol originally in the 90s I remember riding around, I had put a sling on it and I slung it around my back. I used to do a lot of enduro riding through the woods of Kansas. And I took this thing with me. I took it with me camping and all sorts of stuff because I thought it was such a cool pistol because it has the ammunition in the pistol grip versus being forward so it makes it a smaller package and it really is light and handy and quite useful. Now again, you can see it has some sort of an attachment here on top for some sort of a sight mounting arrangement, but I never had anything but open sights on my original pistol. This is not my original pistol because obviously I shot the one I had back in the 90s. I sold it or traded it foolishly. So, all right guys, what a lot of fun. I love history. It's fun to see where things evolve from. A lot of folks probably didn't know that the TP9 evolved from this Austrian made pistol. Fun stuff.
All right, guys, I'm gonna take a chance to shoot these things. It's very rare Tim brings out some, some cool collectibles to shoot. I remember the, the SPP as a kid. Uh, I'd be in the gun shop with my dad looking up at this thing. It was really cool to, to look at. But I tell you what, they were really expensive back in the day. That's probably why I never, my dad never picked one up. But I'm gonna give this thing a shot. I got some 147 grain freedom munitions in there. Let's give this thing a whirl. Didn't lock open, but gotta love my flinches on there. <laughs> ah, yes, the B&T TP9, Tim's SBR. This thing is so much fun to shoot. Every time I come into the shop, he's got this thing there. I'm always picking it up and checking it out. I really want one of these things. Who knows, Tim? May end up with this one one day. Just so much fun to shoot. I really love this thing. Ah, just got to get one. All right, guys, it's time to wrap things up. I hope you enjoyed coming out to the range with us this afternoon, do some shooting with the Steyr SPP pistol. This is kind of a, a modern collectible. You know, collectibles can be World War I, World War II, 1800s revolvers or rifles or shotguns, but collectibles can also have been manufactured in the 80s because, or 90s because they're no longer in production. And when they're no longer in production, the values start to go up. And so collecting has many, many fa facets to it. And this is just one of my favorite things to do is to collect guns from my youth or from my childhood. And the SPP is right in there. I was a very young man when I got my hands on my first one. And uh, yeah, it just stuck with me for life. And I was really excited when I found out that B&T was manufacturing them and also turning them into something even better than the original design. And the fact that I could actually SBR it. To SBR this one would be probably nearly impossible unless you're really, really good in working with polymers, you'd screw up a collectible firearm. Guys, as you probably know, YouTube monetization is affecting us all. If you'd like to support us directly here at the Military Arms Channel, you can do so by swinging by and becoming a Patreon. And over on Patreon, we post behind the scenes information. I write original blog posts and articles. We do giveaways, Forged from Freedom. They do our t-shirts. We give away five t-shirts to five lucky patrons every month. Our friends over at Freedom Munitions give away $300 in ammo. Three winners win $100 worth of ammo every month. And that's just as a thank you for being a Patreon subscriber. But also Copper Customs does blowout deals. So please consider coming by and supporting us over on Patreon. Also, you can just swing by and check us out at Copper Custom, which is our online store. And you can find us there at coppercustom.com. Guys, we really appreciate all the support that you've given us over the years. It means a lot to us. We hope you enjoy coming out to the range and doing some shooting with us. And now we're gonna fire these pistols for the last time this afternoon. Well, technically one's a pistol and one's an SBR. And then we're gonna head home and warm ourselves up. Ah, oh, it's nice and cold. Now let's go suppressed. This is my baby. Oh, I love this one. <laughs> oh, 
my wife is going to be mad at me tonight because I'm sleeping with this one in the bed tonight. I love this little guy. Ah, if you weren't so dirty, I'd give you a kiss.